1. So let me tell you a few of the stories that the unicorns staying here have gifted me with. For context, I work at a hotel near a popular summer camp that many, many parents use after they pick up and drop off their children. We have 50 hotel rooms and around 27 cabins. Some of these cabins are duplexes and quadruplexes, as well as a few full houses that we have bought. Number 1. Early in the camp I had the pleasure of golf carting two really sweet old black ladies around campus. They were incredible tippers. Hell, I would have been fine with no tips at all because they were so fun to be around. They asked what I did during the year, and I told them I'm majoring in trumpet performance at college. The younger one told me how her great uncle had played with trumpeters like Dizzy Gillespie and Wayne Bergeron. She also told me that he had a mouthpiece with L. Armstrong engraved, as well as a few original scores. They made the first few days here a wonderful and fantastic time. Number 2. Around the middle of the summer, we had another family and their kid that were here for a concert nearby. We had booked them in one of our bigger cabins for about five days. When they got there, it smelled like something had died underneath the building. We sent housekeeping to find out what was wrong, but it wasn't anything we could fix. We had to get maintenance down there. While they solved the problem, we tried to find them another room and refund them for the night. So we got them a smaller room while we waited for their original room to be fixed. Unfortunately, the smell couldn't be removed in a night. We had to again move them into the actual hotel building for a night and try again. So they moved into an open and nice hotel room while we looked in our system to come up with a backup plan. The smell still wouldn't be fixed until after they left, and their new room was booked in two days. So we moved them one final time to our nicest room for the last night, at a nice discount, to apologize for all of the trouble. They never complained during this. They were the sweetest family and were loving life. They never once got mad at me or my co-workers. We had lots of really fun conversation. I made double sure to tell them how nice it was to meet them and help them around campus. Number 3. Another unicorn. She was an elderly lady who got flustered very easily, and none of the other staff seemed able to help. I was able to help her through her many, many concerns somehow, talking for five minutes straight about questions she has and problems she had with the camp. I figured out that the best way to help her was to pick and choose the problems I could actually help her with, and answer those when she was done talking. I always made sure to listen intently and take her seriously. She definitely appreciated this, and she seemed to calm down when she could tell I was able to help answer her questions. I thought I had seen her the last time a few weeks ago, and was sad to see her go. However, she called before check-in a few days ago, about her reservation and local restaurants. I recognized her voice immediately, and she recognized mine and was able to address me by name. It made me really happy that I had made her stay several weeks ago so enjoyable, and I was so helpful that she remembered my name. Probably one of my favorite guests. Number 4. A very rich lady and her assistant stayed with us for a few weeks once. We tried booking them in the same room as number two, but she couldn't handle how rustic it was. Hint, very rustic. So we moved them into the hotel for the few weeks they were here. Of course, them being rich, they had a lot of heavy bags, so I hopped on the golf cart with her assistant to remove them. It took two trips with the middle and back seats all loaded up with boxes and luggage. I also helped carry the luggage to our hotel stairs, no elevator and into the room. Afterwards, they tipped me, big time, $40. I would have refused if I had been coherent as she was handing me the money. I didn't know what she wanted. I stood outside their door while it was open holding it, expecting her to take it back. Then they said goodbye and closed the door. I was shocked. I thought about giving it back, but remembered I'm a greedy bastard that is getting paid shit, and needed some gas money. 
The rest of their stay was really enjoyable too. They tipped me much less every once in a while once they realized they couldn't afford as much as they were. I helped cart them around to the camp and around the camp. They were so much fun to be around and share stories with. Number 5. My boss. Super cool lady that made working here an absolute blast. She was always on our side and gave us the benefit of the doubt. Always had answers to problems. Was a master multitasker and just a fun person. She trained all of us new FDAs really well and quickly. She even bought me and two other co-workers ice cream one afternoon. There's a lot of bad stuff happening in the hotel world, and my short time as a part of it wasn't perfect. I just wanted to thank any unicorns out there, reading tales from the front desk, for being amazing people, and I wanted to remind everyone else in hospitality to really appreciate those special guests. Because at the end of the day, we're all humans with different lives, personalities, and stories to tell. 2. Well, I got one. The person who wants free stuff or else they will leave a negative review. New girl was speaking with him while I was with another guest on the phone, so I couldn't interject to tell her what to say or do. The backstory is that the fire alarms went off around 3.45pm today. Eight minutes later, they were off, although my ears say it was more than an hour. This guy comes down and is cracking jokes about it. But then he throws in that he writes reviews and asks what we can give him. New girl looks at me for help. I lean over and say, Unfortunately, due to the nature of the incident, we don't give out comps. Our fire alarms went off to alert us. There was no error. She offers him a snack from our shop. That wasn't good enough. Well, he wants to leave a negative review now if we don't give him free dinner at least. I still have this damn guest on the phone who won't shut up, so I can set this guy straight. New girl runs and grabs our AGM. He feels a bit sympathetic and offers a free appetizer. Negative review guest walks away. Phone guest finally hangs up and I talked to the new girl about how I would have handled that situation, pretty much explaining to her that what he did was considered extortion, and I don't bend even a little bit for people like that. Our AGM personally went to the guest's room to deliver the free appetizer. And would you know that this still wasn't good enough? He wanted more. Homeboy calls the restaurant before the AGM gets back downstairs and tells him that the AGM said he can get a free burger. Our server answered the phone and is like, what? So of course he didn't give some random guy a free burger. AGM comes down, saying this dude gets nothing. He's pushing for more than we offered and is completely cut off. I am waiting for him to call me again demanding free stuff, so I can explain to him what extortion is and tell him I will kick him out of the hotel. It's been quiet so far. Edit. He left a negative review on a survey that only we see. 3. I checked an elderly couple from Florida earlier this week, and they seemed fine. I did not once think that these two would cause any problems. So these two come in from some sort of event, and the man immediately asks me for a complimentary nail filer. Me. I'm sorry, sir, but we don't have those to give out. Asshole. Well, your flyer says that if we needed any amenities, that all I needed to do was ask. Do you have a nail clipper? Me. No, sir, but we do sell them in our sweet shop. Asshole. What? I'm not paying for that. That should be free to guests. Me. Thinks internally, just bite your fucking piece of nail that's aggravating you and call it a night. But as we all know, we just don't have that luxury of expressing how we really feel. So instead, I said, sorry, sir. And off he went, struggling to walk to the elevator since he was fat as hell. Not even five minutes later, this fucktard comes to the front desk screaming, My room has not been cleaned. I specifically told the lady to clean my room. 
me. I'm sorry, sir. Asshole. I don't want to hear your stories. Somebody better go up there and clean my room. Meanwhile, my housekeeper is about to leave, but I can give you fresh sheets and amenities. Asshole. No! I don't give a fuck who has to clean my room. I don't care if you have to clean it. Get me your manager on the line now! Me. At this point, I was unfortunate to have a small line building up behind this fat-ass pig. Is there any way you might have left your Do Not Disturb sign at your door? Asshole. No, I took it off. Now go get your manager. I call my manager and inform her of the situation. She immediately knows who it is. She tells me to check the housekeeping reports to see if this prick left a Do Not Disturb sign or not. And wouldn't you believe it, he did have it on the door. My manager tells me to have the housekeeper refresh his room and just give it a little sweep. I tell this to the housekeeper and apologize deeply because it was 9.58 and her shift ends at 10. I tell this sorry excuse for a human being that our records show that he did have a do not disturb sign on his door. He tells me that he tipped one of our housekeepers $10 to have his room cleaned. She was going to clean it, but since this douchebag still had the DND sign up, she did not clean it per our hotel's policy regarding DNDs. I tell him that my housekeeper will freshen up his room and he leaves. I was so embarrassed when I was checking in the guest behind him, who was a top elite member to our brand, and I apologized for what he witnessed. Well, this morning we had our monthly meeting, and we are having it in the back office. I see his fat ass waiting at the front desk through the cameras. Apparently this motherfucker tells my supervisor that I was very rude to him and I was no help. My supervisor apologized and even offered to reward this motherfucker 10,000 points towards his rewards program. I was so pissed at reward such behavior just to minimize the risk of a bad evaluation, which we all know will still happen. I swear if this motherfucker tries some shit like this with me tonight, I don't give a fuck. I will have him evicted and don't give a rat's ass about the consequences. 4. Night Auditor here, checking in to share my suffering with fellow hotel boys and hotel girls. This morning I put out breakfast as usual. Our breakfast goes from 6 to 10, and our breakfast attendant doesn't come in until 7, so the guests are stuck with me for about an hour every morning. I'm not as knowledgeable about everything as she is, but I get the job done adequately. However, this morning, I had a run-in with the most unpleasable person I've had the displeasure of serving. I had just set out breakfast and gone into the laundry room to finish folding some towels before my replacement came in. When I heard the desk bell ring, a quick glance at the security camera showed a guy walking quickly away, which was odd, but whatever. I went out and was met with a tall older guy who seemed pretty agitated. Me, good morning, did you need something? Man, yeah buddy, the orange juice machine is spitting out water. He spoke with a fairly thick southern accent. Me, oh I'm sorry to hear that. Our breakfast attendant will be here in about 30 minutes and she knows how to fix it. He didn't say anything to me, just walked away with his hands on his hips and started muttering angrily to another guy who was eating breakfast. It was pretty passive-aggressive and was obviously meant for me to hear, but I just went back to the towels, because who in the world has time for that? About a minute later, the bell rang again. I checked the camera. Same guy. Oh, joy. Me. Nietzsche. Man. You got no orange juice. There ain't no milk in there, nothing but coffee. I knew there was a gallon of milk sitting right there. I knew the hot water container was filled with tea bags and hot chocolate mix right next to it. I knew there was nothing wrong with the apple juice or the pitcher of ice water I had just made. 
Assuming he was simply angry about something more important in his life, and seizing an opportunity to take it out on someone else, I basically just deflected. Me. Oh, there's no milk in there. I'll fix that right away. He went back to his seat and resumed grumbling loudly while I grabbed another gallon of milk from the kitchen. Seeing me put it in the guest fridge, he spoke up. Man, oh, you're putting another gallon in there. I saw that one. But I wasn't going to touch it because... You know what? Forget it. I seriously hope this guy is just going through some personal stuff right now. 5. I worked at a fairly well-known hotel chain for about four months. Reasoning for working for only four months is because the hotel was individually owned, and the owner sold it to new owners who got rid of all staff and replaced them with new staff. These situations happened about a month and a half in, so I basically just started and was still learning everything. At about 5pm, I had an older couple come in, saying they already had a reservation. They did. I scanned their ID and payment information and got their room keys ready. Had them sign in and gave them their room keys and told them to enjoy their stay. Five minutes later, the wife comes down, saying the key isn't working. No big deal. Sometimes the keys just mess up. So I made them two new keys, handed them to her and apologized. Five more minutes later, the wife comes down saying those keys don't work. I thought maybe they're putting them in wrong or something. But whatever, I made two new keys, grabbed my master key, and went up with her to see what's going on. I get upstairs, and the first thing the husband says to me is, This is completely ridiculous and a waste of time. I should have been in the room by now. I apologize and try the new keys. It didn't work. Try my master key and it worked. But I decided to switch the rooms because something is obviously wrong with the door. I tell them I'm going to have them switch rooms because something is wrong with the door. The wife comes down with me so I can switch the rooms because the husband is annoyed that I should have switched the rooms in the first place. So I switch their rooms and here's where shit tips off. The husband comes down in a full-blown rage. There is no remote or microwave in my room. How am I supposed to heat up my leftovers? I explained that none of the rooms have microwaves and all guests should use the one in the lobby kitchen area. I also apologize about the remote and let him know I'll get him a new one. I worked by myself, so I had to call a co-worker and ask where the remotes were, as this man is screaming in my face. Well, that's stupid that I have to walk all the way downstairs to heat up my food. There should be a microwave in all rooms. Give me my remote now. As he's yelling, I get swarmed by other guests needing to check in. So I'm checking them in as he berated me in front of other guests. How can you be so stupid that you don't know where the remote is that you have to call someone to tell you? I apologize and say that I just started and I'm still learning. Well, this isn't the job for you then. You ever think of that? Maybe you can't work in this environment. I am ignoring him completely as he's yelling these things to me, just so I can focus on checking in these other guests. Why are you going to ignore me? I am a guest just like everyone else. You can't ignore me. Sir, I'm with another guest right now. I told you I apologize and I'm trying. Now, if you can please stop yelling at me as I'm trying to check in other guests, I would appreciate it. I'll be with you when I'm finished. This is fucking ridiculous. You're fucking ridiculous. You suck at this job. So now he walks out of the building and his wife has the nerve to tell. You know what? I've had enough. I was trying to keep him calm, but that's not going to happen anymore. I'm calling corporate and getting you fired immediately. After she said that, I finally got a hold of my co-worker who told me where the remotes were and how to get them to work. And as I'm talking to her, the husband barges in the building, up to the desk and yells, I'm speaking to your manager tomorrow, and you will be fired. And by the way, thank you so much for ruining our dinner. My co-worker got on the phone with him and tried to calm him down. I don't know what she said, but he yelled at her too. Anyway, I handed him the remote, and he says, Oh, wow. Was that so hard? It took you that long to finally give me the damn remote. 
I didn't respond at all. I continued to work and ignored him because I knew if I responded, I would have absolutely flipped my shit. The next day I go into work and my co-worker is there. She said the husband came down bright and early in the morning to talk to my manager. He told my manager that I was the rudest human being he's ever come across and that I never helped and never wanted to help any of his needs. My co-worker then told me that as people were checking out, they defended me by saying that everything the man told my manager was a lie. They said that the man was so enraged that they feared for my safety, so they were standing outside of their rooms listening in case things got out of hand and they could step in. They said I handled it very professionally and calmly for being yelled at for an hour and a half straight. That night, on my shift, the man came up to me and apologized, saying that he's not a bad guy, he just has a really bad temper. Hey everybody, Hal Freezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Confessions of a Hotel Worker number four. It's been a little while since I did these, thought it was about time I, I try to get another one together. And as often happens, I was very fortunate, and I've actually got enough stories to do a couple of videos, so uh, I'll have options next week. That's good. Uh, we might have we might we might have neckbeard stories. I've got enough to do that. Uh, I could do another hotel video, and uh, I could do more retail. So uh, just let me know what you'd like in the comments, and whatever gets the the most support, uh, that's what I'll do next Sunday. I'm easy either way. I kind of like all these videos. Okay, with that, I think I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening and take very good care of yourselves.